Travel Tea, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my August the book haul. There's also a book in here that I got in July that I neglected to include in my July video, but I'm going to tell you about it right now. And if you've been watching my videos, if you've been watching, if you've been watching my vlogs, then you've probably seen me talk about some of these books. You might have seen when I acquired them, but I wanted to make a video where I talked about all these books in a group, I guess just for completeness. So the first book I'll share with you is the book that I got in July. This is V.S. Naipaul's Miguel Street. And this year I've already read two books by this author and I'm trying to read more of his works because I'm really intrigued by his writing. V.S. Naipaul was born in Trinidad. He moved to England when he was just 18 years old. And he spent most of his adult life either in England or traveling the world and writing about his experiences both from his boyhood as well as the things that he observed as he moved around. I've been reading his writings since I was a teenager in the Caribbean myself and I just want to explore more of his writings now that I'm an adult and see even when I reread books that I've read before how I appreciate them differently now. I'd also like to collect everything that he published. I don't know at what point I'll be able to do that, but for now, I got this book, Miguel Street. I got this in a free box sometime in July. I was walking in Harlem and there was a box of donated books, I think outside of the school. This might have come from the school library at the end of their summer session or something. And when I saw this title, I knew that this book was destined for me. So Miguel Street is set in Trinidad and it's set, I think, on one specific street called Miguel Street. And it's about the observations by this one teenage boy who's probably based on V.S. Naipaul's experience because he does write some autobiographical content in his novels. And it's about the people in his neighborhood that he observes and what he sees and comments on from their lives. And I think I read this one as a teenager, but I'm really looking forward to rereading it because I so enjoy reading books by Caribbean authors and seeing the universality of experiences, not just similar to what I experienced while I was growing up in Jamaica, but what are some of the things that transcend cultural differences and cultural barriers? What of what is being described in this book you might see mirrored in maybe inner city life here in the united states so that was the book that i got in july and the others there are six of them are books that i got in august i bought these two books at book culture so i'll, look, I'll tell you about those first this is a 1984 man booker prize winner hotel du lac by anita bruckner and i've already read this one but again i want to collect all the books that have won the booker prize so I saw this one on the sale table, sale cart, sale shelf, so I picked it up. The main character in this one is a romance novelist and she leaves home to spend some time at a hotel in Switzerland because she needs to escape her life. Even though she's been writing romance novels, her own romantic life has been kind of spiraling out of control. She's found herself in a love triangle. And so she moves into this hotel kind of in a long-term stay and finds herself, finds the life that she starts to live in this hotel, again, mirroring some of the things that she writes. And it's a fascinating look at how women are perceived and how women perceive themselves in relationships. And I read this one before, but I am going to be rereading it because I haven't posted my review yet. So when I need to make my review video, I'm probably gonna have to rescan this book, even though I've read it earlier this year. I don't think I made notes. The next book that I bought at Book Culture was for $5.98, and I absolutely love seeing books that I've been wanting to read and wanting to own and seeing them on sale tables. This is Marisha Pessel's Special Topics in Calamity Physics. She's also the author of Night Film, but this was her debut novel. And the reviews for this one were excellent. I don't know too much about the story. I know it follows a young woman who has either witnessed someone being killed or found someone who had been killed. And her experience there has been plaguing her and so she's been living with insomnia of some sort. I read Night Film earlier this year and really enjoyed it. I like Marisha Pessel's writing. I like how she investigates a story from lots of different 
not quite perspectives because night film didn't follow multiple perspectives but we got to see the story being told kind of like as a, through a report through an investigative journalist's eyes as well as she brought in a lot of mixed media to help tell the story and i think just based on the title here that we're about to get some scientific exploration there's also some mixed media in here there is some art i'm guessing these are not just illustrations these are probably just these are probably pictures for clues and in flipping through i'm seeing poems and other discussion topics but also the fact that this book i looked at the table of contents and the table of contents is arranged as though it is a core curriculum required reading all the chapter headings are books novels Othello, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, The House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, and they go through all the way to chapter 36. So these are 36 titles of books, novels. I might make a video where I just talk about those and see how many of those books I've read. <laughs> Stay tuned for that video coming soon. So. I'm looking forward to reading this one. It's a 500 plus page, uh, just about, yeah, just a little over 500 pages. And another reason that I'm really looking forward to this one, I love seeing science topics and science terms being included in books that aren't necessarily science fiction. So the fact that this is Calamity Physics, that intrigued me from the first time I heard this title. And I've been looking forward to reading this or hearing someone tell me that I shouldn't read it and tell me why but since none of those two things have happened yet I'm gonna read it and I'll report back so those are the two books that I got at book culture I got this one on sale for $6.98 and I got this one on sale for $5.98 so I consider those to be scores the next three are books that I bought from Barnes & Noble classic table and I got these in the half price sale that I found. I talked about those in my reading vlog a couple of weeks ago as well. The first one is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And I've read all the Austen books, but I've, I've also wanted to collect them. And I don't know that I necessarily wanted to collect this series, the Barnes and Noble classic series, but <sighs> I like it. I like the arrangement. I like the font. I like how much space there is to make notes. And a few years ago, this might have been when I was in college or just left college. But in any case, this was pre-booktube. A friend of mine and I decided we were going to read all the Austin books. And I went to Barnes & Noble and bought all the books that I needed. I'd already had two of the books. They were in a different edition and I bought the other four. So I have the other four books in this series and it just makes sense that if you have four out of six, if you want to collect the books, instead of starting from zero and getting all six new books, just collect the other two from that set. So over the course of the years, I have donated or given away the other two books so I don't have. Pride and Prejudice I had in some kind of a mass market paperback edition, I think, and Emma, is the other one that I still don't have. I don't remember what edition that one was in, but I've given that one as way as well. So <laughs> that's a long story to say. I bought Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've already read it, but I wanted to own it and I wanted to get it in this collection so that I can complete my series. So now I'm only missing Emma from this series. And the next time I go to Barnes and Noble and see that book there, I'll buy it. Last time I went, they didn't have it, but I'm gonna get it at some point. So right now I have five of six of Jane Austen's books. So I'm sure you know the plot of Pride and Prejudice, so I won't go through it, but just in case you've forgotten which book goes where, this is the one with the five sisters. Elizabeth Bennet is one of the sisters. And because of the decline in the family's financial future, the sisters need to marry and marry well in order to secure their lives. And Mr. Darcy is one of the suitors most suited for the financial success of this family. And this book has one of the most unforgettable opening lines. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. That is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. The other two books that I bought at Barnes and Noble from their classic stable 
The Jungle by Upton Sinclair is the first one. Upton Sinclair is a muckraker. He's one of the journalists who lived in the early 1900s and whose writings brought about awareness of social conditions and because of the response to his writings they these reporters were also instrumental in effecting public policies so those are who muckrakers were and i only found that out a year or so ago when i started working with students going through American history. American history was not something that I learned when I was growing up as a teenager in Jamaica. So a lot of US history I'm learning now. A lot of US history I'm learning now. A lot of US history I'm learning now. A lot of US history I'm learning now as an adult. And reading about those muckrakers from historical terms makes me very curious about the books that caused all these changes in public policy. So The Jungle by Upton Sinclair is probably one of the most well-known because this is a book that talked about the food industry specifically and brought about public outcry about conditions in these meat factories and because of Upton Sinclair's writings, the Food and Drug Act, the FDA, probably got started. President Theodore Roosevelt, it says, demanded an official investigation, which eventually led to the passage of the Pure Food and Drug Act. For a novel to have such an impact outside its literary context is extremely rare. So I've been wanting to read this ever since I've heard about the history. So I saw it on the Barnes & Noble Classics table. I had to pick it up. And this one was $9.95, I got it half price, so I paid about $5 for it. The Pride and Prejudice was $6.95, so half price, I only paid about $3.50. And then the last Barnes & Noble classic that I bought is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have never read this book. And this book appears on a lot of lists. You know, I love to do list challenges to see how many books on some list that's curated by some person, how many of them I've read. Frankenstein comes up a lot and it's just a book that I never really wanted to read because I've been feeling like it's a horror but maybe it's not so much of a horror maybe it's more of a science fiction with a little bit of a thrilling aspect but I could handle it. I'm an adult now. I could handle it. So Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This one is about a young man. I think he's a science student and he decides to try to assemble a body out of body parts. So maybe he's a medical student. I'm not sure, but I don't want to read too much about the synopsis because I'm going to read this pretty soon. In any case, he makes this creature who turns out to be kind of a monster and starts to attack his creator and while I'm sure that is a harrowing story to read the exploration of bioterrorism and what are some of the consequences of your decisions I'm sure those are themes that are going to be explored here so I'm really looking forward to reading this now and I bought this one for about four dollars with $7.95 half price I paid about four bucks so those are the three books that I bought on the Barnes & Noble Classics sale a couple of weeks ago and then the last book that I got in August was from my book of the month club and I had a gift subscription from book of the month club and it took me a really long time to choose the books that I wanted because sometimes I see new releases and I'm not sure that I'm gonna like them and I don't want to buy a book until I'm sure that I want to own it especially if I'm using up credit on my gift subscription but somehow all the books that I have gotten from book of the month club have turned out to be winners and this one was no different this is Ruth Ware's Turn of the Key and I absolutely enjoyed reading this book I sped through this reading and I recommend it if you are looking for a new mystery suspense Ruth Ware she surprised me because so far in reading her books I've been interested up to the resolution of the story and this one I enjoyed it all the way through and I can't tell you too much about the story without ruining it so here's my brief synopsis it's about a young woman who goes to work with a family as a nanny and someone dies and she's blamed 
she ends up in jail and she's writing about her experiences trying to get help from a solicitor. The only other detail that you might need to know is that the story takes place in a house that may or may not be haunted. So the main character is not sure if she's living through some kind of a surreal experience or if someone is playing a trick on her or using her for some kind of a test. I really recommend this book and again book of the month club came through with this one so even though my gift subscription has now expired i am definitely considering getting my own subscription in fact they sent me a reminder today that i need to pick new books even though i'm no longer a subscriber but i think i'm gonna do it because i've so enjoyed all the books that i have gotten from them so you might be seeing more book of the month club books in my next haul so there's that. So that's my book haul. Those are the books that I got in August and one book in July. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you have read any of these, especially if you've read special topics in Calamity Physics and loved it. I'd love to hear some positive reviews. But of course, if you have a negative review, I'll indulge that as well. You can't just always want to hear good news, right? So this is my mostly August book haul. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for being here to share this excitement at New Books with me. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let's talk in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you about these books. And we'll talk down there. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.